All right, this is about the best explanation I've seen yet about enzymes in metabolism. Metabolism means what you break down to metabolize to run your body. Now, an organism uses the raw materials it has available, what you eat, to supply energy and the chemical building blocks it needs to grow. So, everybody knows that. The chemistry it uses is, is, is called metabolism. It's complex, but we can group the reactions into two simple categories. This is where it's important to understand. There's a breakdown of pro products, which are large molecules, into smaller units that we can, can use to eat, to, to absorb. It's called catabolism. And then there are other ones that build those small units back into large molecules. Anabolism. So they build things back up. In general, catabolic, catabolic reactions release energy to a network of small molecules that then make it available for the anabolic reactions to use. It's all done by bacteria. It's just not floating around by accident. Bacteria do everything. Organisms have enzymes which are catalysts to make sure that each reaction in its metabolism happens at the correct speed. These catalysts are like orchestral directors. Not button. No, that's not going to work. You have to have these these bacteria in there that know how to do the da -da -da -dum, da -da -da -dum, and just keep doing it all day long forever for the rest of your life. Well, you kill that guy and there's, there's no more da -da -da -da, ba -da -ba -da -ba, it's just going to go crazy. And that's what happens. That is really what's happening. And it, well, I say that as a researcher. I don't know. We need to do more investigation. Until recently, Scientists thought all biological catalysts were proteins, but they have discovered a group of nucleic acid molecules called ribozymes. So from the ribosome, they make their own ribozymes, which are enzymes, and they act as catalysts in some single-celled organism. So they're still finding out a lot of things. Now, in this section, though, we will only look at protein catalysts, okay, which is our type of catalyst how enzymes work. Catalysts change the speed of a chemical reaction without suffering any permanent chemical change themselves. It's just like you make a spark and all kinds of things happening, but you can make another spark. It's in, actually, in any case, the spark just continues. You could take one single molecule of this enzyme and within one second or so, it can change a million other molecules into what it wants to use. That's why the body is so reactive, absolutely unbelievably reactive to circumstances. It's incredibly reactive. All right, so to understand how enzymes work as catalysts, we need a simple picture of what happens to the particles when the two chemicals react. And they don't really know, I've got to be honest with you. It's ions, it's correct. It's, it's all pH and acids and salts and, and, and these transition metals. These are the things that carry things around. They carry them around with what they call a ligand. They clip to this one, they clip to that one, clip to this one, they bring it over, they drop it off where it needs to be, they pick up what they need to pick up. These are the things that run through your blood system and do the pickup and delivery agents. It's really, it's, it's, a, it's complex, but it's if, if you follow the path one step at a time, it's, it's, it becomes understandable. Okay, my friends, it appears nothing happens in your body unless it involves bacteria. Probiotics. Bacteria make all the enzymes, which are the catalysts. A fundamental task of proteins, which are made by bacteria, is to act as enzymes and catalysts to increase the rate of virtually all the chemical reactions within the cells. Although RNAs are capable of catalyzing some reactions. Well, the RNAs, are they catalyze it, but they do it at the command of the bacteria. 
most biological reactions are catalyzed by proteins. Yes, absolutely. And where do we think the proteins come from? They come from this cytoplasm where all the bacteria live, and they make them. Well, let me qu clarify that. Inside of every cell, there's organelles, and then there's a cytoplasm. Now, I believe the cytoplasm is the home of the of the programs, and they turn on the mRNA to say, hey, I, re I saw this COVID-19 thing and I've seen it before, I know what to do. Here's the instructions what you should send out and do. Then that program, I believe the ribosome will do that. And, and then that makes a chemistry set to go out and do what it's supposed to do. But that chemistry set has to be made with correct chemicals. You don't have the correct chemicals in your body. You're not ingesting them correctly, or you have too much toxicity in your body, or you're still being evaded in your body because you have no mucus and no catalysts and no enzymes from these bacteria that are supposed to be there. Then you're in trouble. That's the problem, I believe. That's what my research indicates. Now, again, I'm not saying, I'm not telling you to do anything. But I'm just telling you that if if you've been damaged probably by antibiotics, I I would think that where we should start to research and look is to see what people that are 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 sick, what their bacteria levels are, what kind of bacteria they have in their body, and ones that aren't sick, what kind of bacteria they have, and where are the you, what you want to do to go to the spot where it's. You know, the lung, you, you've got lung issues, you've got a heart issue. Because right now they're talking about the heart, the lungs, and the blood vessels are, are the things that are being damaged by COVID. It's attacking some collagen or keratin, a keratin, whatever you want to call it. It's one of those fibrous things that's being attacked, and it's just flopping and, and stopping to work. And then they leak and cause all kinds of problems, and then, you know, it's, it's not a good outcome in a lot of cases. If your body can't not come back and fight against it, how does it fight against it? It has to have the correct bacteria. So if we find the people that are dying and find out what bacteria they have versus the people that have never had a problem, what bacteria they have, what's the difference? There's going to be a difference. Because the bacteria are the chemists. That's all I can figure out is the bacteria are the chemists. I think we should investigate some resources into that instead of, well, I don't know what they're doing, but I think we should certainly investigate that because that's, that covers every illness. Once you figure out what bacteria is missing, even, even in, let's take breast cancer. They claim that, well, you know, a woman has a cancer in one breast, it it's, could possibly come to the other breast. Why? Why is just the breast? Because the breast tissue is protected by one certain type of bacteria. You know, there's going to be a bunch of them in there. Yes, absolutely, zillions of them. But one bacteria will, if it's not there, you're invadable. So if it's not in that breast, the other breast more than likely will not have it either because it's already been killed. For some reason, that bacteria is missing. If we knew what bacteria it was, maybe that's all we have to do is put that bacteria back and then that tissue now, that membrane becomes protected. And the same thing with lymph node cancer. I'm really very, very deep into this right now. And the, the lymph node cancer is the same thing. Why would you have skin cancer? on your back and then all of a sudden have it show up in your leg or your kidney or your lung or something and they say oh well, because it drags the bad cells around and then they get caught somewhere and then they start causing problems I say no uh, well yes and no once you're invaded in an area that's weak because it doesn't have the bacteria to break down the products. And lymph, well, you know what lymph nodes do? Is they take down all the crap that's in your body, break it all down and get it out. Well, apparently something's not getting broken down and it's, it's causing toxicity in that lymph node. It breaks through that membrane and that's what invasion is. That's what cancerous invasion is. Is stage one, two, three, four, it breaks down one layer, two, three, four, five, and boof, now it's in your body. Now you're sick sicker than hell, and then it invades your whole body, yes, yes, but it's because you don't have that bacteria anywhere in your body, that's my take, and the bacteria is supposed to be there is overwhelmed 
by the invaders. There's always going to be a give and take. You're never going to be a, uh, totally free of, of a disease. Absolutely not. Your body is continuously sensing and, and working with those invaders. I don't know whether... Uh, you know, it's just killing them, or whether it's, I believe it just kills them, or whether they're shaking hands and saying, all right, you do the, you can stay there, but don't come this far, that's it, case closed for you. And that may well be, I have no idea. But I can tell you what, there's, I, I think right now there's something like 80,000 different bacterias in your body. Every single one of them creates a chemistry set. It's an, and a very, very, very sophisticated chemistry set.